member, we call it uh, the liaison officer, is the spokesperson for the team as a whole. So we have 16 liaison officers plus the members of the zero. Then we have uh, a total of 22 students. That's uh, a nice representation of all the security students. And we have a sound mix of forensic students and fully security students. Because you have your, your um, tutoring starting at 2 o'clock, I arranged that the manager is arriving at uh, 2.45, uh, 40, after the tutoring. And during the tutoring session on upcoming Thursday, there will be also a selection of teams that have to do a presentation on assignment three. So be prepared. Um, to give some body to this evaluation, you are going to be asked not only to evaluate the total uh, security semester and all its underlying items, courses and projects, but I want you to prepare in your own team what do you think per item that's good, that's a top, that's something you want us to keep because it's the strength of the course or of the security semester. And you give a tip. A tip is something that could be or should be modified. Maybe add a topic that has not has been uh, uh, talked about or whatever. In, in your eyes, it's a weakness that can do better. So what you have to do in your team before upcoming th Thursday is per item, I'll show you the item in the next uh, uh, slide, formulate at least three and maximum five tops <coughs> and tips. It will be in Dutch, I think, so make it yourself easy. You can give three to five toppers and three to five tippers. This is the picture of the thematical semester on security. That's the whole. And we have four courses being risk assessment, infrastructure security, software security and incident response, and then the security projects that started in uh, the previous quarter and will end in this quarter. So on these six items, the thematical semester as a whole, and per course, four courses, and on the projects, please think about what do you think is good, keep it, that's a top, and what could be better, that's a tip. So your feedback will be communicated by your representative, the liaison officer, to the management team in the person of Tom van der Dries. So we have uh, 16 times input on what keeping and what modifying and then the members of Team uh, Zero should decide if they want to do it individually, but they can also do it as a team. Then there shall be one <coughs> representative of Team Zero that will give the tips and the tops. Is that clear? So you don't have to do an extra evaluation session Thursday the 11th. It's scheduled in regular classes. So be positive, a top is something positive that you experience to keep, and a tip is something that could be made positive. Okay, this is the evaluation, is this clear? Yes. Okay.
then I'll go to the next part because I had some questions about it. It's the exam. As you know, like I told you at the start of this course, there are four topics. You dive into the field of information security or security. You learn about how to handle a security incident or security incident by detecting, reacting, and evaluating such an incident. Specifically, how to perform incident response and learning how to structure and visualize data. What did we do? We did lectures, we did uh, tutoring sessions, we did some uh, practical assignment. Three already, one is due to be briefed on, and you have one final exam. There is a difference between the assignments that was practice that you did in teams, and there is the theory part of the course that's individual. Um, you see, you have done three practical assignments due to the result of a, a plan, a word, and a PowerPoint presentation, and you have to do the last and final uh, assignment, number four, that will be a research assignment with uh, the results being a report and a poster. I will talk you through assignment four later on. That's 60% of the total of grading that you get. But remember, all the practical assignments should be quite added up and divided by four if necessary, at least a six. The exam is an individual uh, part of the course, but also you only pass the exam if you have a six or higher. The exam, of course, is about the book, but also about the lectures. So the, you can say the exam is theory-based. Um, the book you already have, when you started with uh, security, the computer security book of uh, Stallings, only the incident response related chapters are due for the exam. We have five lectures, including the lecture of today. So all the slides of the lectures and all the additional material you got are also part of uh, the exam material to study. And if you want to, I strongly suggest, but it's your choice, do the self-assessment questions about the incident response chapters of the book. Okay, so it's an individual exam. It's not electronically. It's old-fashioned paper exam. You get 80 multiple choice questions with four answers per question, but only one of the four answers is correct. You've got two class hours, so 100 minutes, for answering the 18 multiple choice questions. And together with the exam questions, you will be handed over uh, an answering form, two-sided, for the uh, answer possibilities on the front side and for the answering possibilities on the back side. And you have to take a pen or a pencil or whatever with you to cross the right answering possibility. Um, it will be in the examination uh, week. Now it's week seven, so it will be uh, in week 10. Um, and I arranged with uh, the person who's uh, planning the examinations to do it uh, on uh, class hours for security. So you have great possibility that on Tuesday 
you will have the software security exam, and on Thursday you will have the incident response exam. Because those are the days that you are already meant to go to school. Uh, the procedure is first they come with a schedule and then we can look into the schedule and I will make sure that in week 10, on the Tuesday and on the Thursday, your exams are scheduled. I don't know exactly the date, but you can imagine if it's today the first, tomorrow it's the second, that and it is week seven, eight, nine, ten. It will be somewhere, uh, I think it's the 23rd and the 25th of June. So, exactly, thank you. So the 23rd, Tuesday, will be probably your software security exam scheduled, and on Thursday, the 25th of June, your uh, incident response exam will be scheduled. So you have from now enough time to prepare yourself for the exam, yes? Do we get a You can use the self-assessment questions to give you an idea what kind of uh, questions are going to be asked. And is it open or closed? It's closed. It's very closed. Yes. So no other means are allowed than pens and pencils. And your memory, of course. Question? Only multiple questions. Yes, 18 multiple choice questions per question, four answer possibilities with only one correct answer. Are the answers for the self assessments reviewable? Uh, uh, they should be reviewable. Does, does Moodle tell you which answers? It, it should be. If not, then you can uh, 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 give a mail. You, you can send a mail to uh, um, the general security account that Arnie can arrange that if the uh, uh, right answers aren't available yet, it, they should be available. Is it more of or paper? It's a paper exam. Please listen carefully. Incident response is a paper exam. That's why you have to take pens or pencils or pens and pencils with you. That's why you have to use the mandatory answering form with 40 answers on the front and 40 answers on the back side. The security students are already used to it because they had the same type of exam during the course on risk assessment. Okay, what chapters out of the book of computer security do you have to study? Only four chapters. Chapter one, that's the overview, the general introduction on the field of security, plus the chapters eight, 17, and 18. And are, at the end of each chapter, you have the uh, keywords, and, uh, and, and you have to study the keywords and take the self-assessment questions if you want to. Reading a few questions are nice to look at, but that are open questions and you don't have to answer these open questions as preparation for the exam. Roberto? Didn't the uh, on businesses we also uh, have to study 10 to 17? Yes. I'm, I'm just confused. Why again? I mean, last time we did 17, 41, until 44, I think. Yes. And now we need to do it again. Or? Yes. With the emphasis on those uh, parts of chapter 17 uh, that are um, meant to be useful for incident response. So specifically the paragraphs about uh, incident response uh, activities, uh, what to do if uh, a member of the uh, human force, the personnel, uh, does something wrong. Uh, it can be an insider uh, threat event. Yes? Okay. So, four chapters to study. 
questions about those four chapters plus, of course, the uh, questions about the, the lectures we had. In lecture one, you gave other chapters. Uh, yes. Were, were those about? This is the final okay. slide. These oh, are the I can't forget about it. You can forget about that. that what, we used a lot of those chapters and, and paragraphs in preparation of the assignments and of the lectures, but for the exam, you will only need those four chapters and the three related CISSP domains. The questions will be about operation security, domain number seven, business continuity and disaster recovery planning, domain eight, and domain nine, nine legal regulations, investigations, and compliance with the emphasis on investigations. So don't delve too deep into domain nine. Focus specifically on the investigative part. Okay. That was. Uh, is that clear about the exam? If you miss the exam or receive a grade lower than six, there will be an extra exam in August. I don't hope you have to take an extra exam, but if so, then you know when it's going to be scheduled. Yes? No questions about the exam? Then I'll take you through Assignment because the fourth assignment will be your final assignment. You, you can use the way in, in reality an event is happening and how you are going to solve it as means to solve assignment four. So the fundamental part that I skipped yet, I'll take that fundamental part after explaining assignment four, so that you know, oh, if I have to do as a team assignment four, then I could take those steps. Okay, the fourth assignment is not a black bag job or a scenario. The fourth assignment is a research assignment. And I'm going to brief you on assignment number four. The vote come an extra document brief. So the brief is in the slides. <coughs> okay. It's still on the same general issue, we have an organization that wants to protect the security and is therefore searching for the best way to handle security incidents. You are confronted with specific questions that you as a team have to answer. The specific questions are what and how, and finally, what are the lessons learned? And you have to give answers to what, that, how, that way, what lessons learned, that lessons learned. Okay. The steps are as follows. You as a team choose your own topic. What is the topic should be, I will explain in a minute. You choose your own topic. Then, when you have your topic, you start your research and you are obliged to use two research models. One, the topic mind map, explanation follows, and follow the research steps, explanation follows. The results of your assignment for your final assignment should be twofold. One, the report with 
the results of your research being the answers on the questions asked. And finally, a panel study. I will explain that later. Okay. You have to choose your topic. And a marvelous instrument to tackle the topic uh, is this mind map. Whatever topic you want to choose, it, it should be a, a specific kind of uh, security incident. If you have your topic, I call it X, then you start with working your way from number one, what, to number eight, for what, the W questions on your topic. And I put small words to give you an idea. If you answer the what questions, then you have to describe what features X has. And if you talk about when, then you talk about the time period. When came it on? When became it active? Is it still active or is it already passed? When you talk about the where question, you talk about the location. That could be a geographical location, it could be a physical location, it could be a virtual location, it, it's about the place or the part of an IT infrastructure where X is going to be active. With what? What does X need to do what it wants to do? And five, which way? What are the modes? Can it be, in, for example, in, in, in silent mode? Or do you uh, have to use it uh, while the organization is possibly becoming aware of that you are using X? So it can be in stealth or not. Who is using the topic? Who is using X? What actors are handling X to do harm? Why, number seven, would an actor use X? There should be some reasons for it. That's most of the time one of the out of three, or two out of three, or three out of three. It's about uh, money, it's about power, and it's about sex. So, make your choice. Um, for what? What's the ultimate goal that an actor wants to achieve when using X? Well, it's, it's most of the times related to two or three reasons, but ultimately you want to um, be the most powerful person of the world, uh, the most uh, rich person of the world, or the person with as many partners as you can handle without uh, medicine. So this topic mind map will help you to discover whatever topic you're going to choose as a team. Okay, topic. How are you going to find your topic? You need to look, you can either start with A or start with B, or the other way around. You need to pick out one specific category of incidents, the five that we already mentioned, A, B, C, D, E. A is maybe not so obvious, but maybe a team says, well, uh, that's the natural uh, uh, harm, natural cause, uh, disasters, uh, uh, a flood, a uh, tropical storm, whatever, tsunami. Maybe there is a team that wants to use the natural cause category A as a favorite uh, topic. So first, you can look what category is for our team the most interesting one, and then you are trying to discover a real life incident that fits into that category. 
For example, if you take category A, uh, natural uh, harm, and um, I want to use a uh, flood, then I could uh, uh, look for specific real life incidents. Uh, for example, we had in the Netherlands uh, a flooding incident uh, at the end of the 1990s where the water in the rivers was rising very hard and a lot of companies that were situated uh, along the Rhine and the uh, Merwe, the, those rivers, had to be evacuated. And there was a, a quite a lot of damage done on computer equipment and information systems at companies located near the flooded or the, the, the swollen uh, rivers. So if you have a ah, natural harm, a ah, flood, a ah, um, this uh, event in the 1990s, you are going to look, see, for far to to find for searching and finding five, six or seven substantial articles about the incident. So it must be published at least in a paper, and substantial is not this length of article, it should be a few columns per article, so substantial. And then you are going to analyze the collected articles about your chosen incident to be able to answer the questions. You have three categories of questions to answer. The first one is what happened and how did it happen? 1A and 1B. That's about the incident itself. The second question to A to B, what was the response of the organization that was hit by the incident? And how did the response work out? So question two, A and B, is about the incident response part. Question one is about the incident. And question three, what are the lessons learned? So afterwards, when the incident happened and the response was over, hopefully there are some clues that give you a hint about what lessons were learned after the incident. So this is your main view on the research questions you have to do. Questions so far? Yes. Uh, what question did we do you mean um, how was the response solved or how, what effect did the response have? Okay, question one is the incident, shit happens. Yeah. Question two, the organization that was confronted with the incident has responded. What was the response of this organization and what, what were the effects, the results of the response on that specific incident. And finally, did the organization learn some lessons first about the incident and then about their incident response? Is that yes, clear enough? Yes, okay. More questions? This is the model you've got to use. The security students are already familiar with the model uh, because it was similar to what they had to use by, uh, at uh, uh, risk assessment. What you have to do is follow this model in the right order. I will take you through it step by step. The first thing, like I said, is to, do, to choose your favorite topic a specific incident in a specific incident category. Then you are going to find and collect sufficient five, six or seven articles. And that's your working material. And those articles 
are put in your final report in the annexes. This is where the annexes, the five or seven articles go. At the end of your report. Then, based on your articles, you are going to put the questions to the articles, trying to find the answers. And then, by answering the questions, you have built your reconstruction of the incident and the incident response. That will be the main text. So the main text is the middle part. Then, after you've done your reconstruction, answered the questions with help of your five till seven articles, you use your reconstruction to write an original and catchy summary called the story. The story. And you see a thick line between A and B, between the main text and the annexes, because this is the official stuff, and this is free format, it should be original and catchy. Then, after you have written your story, you use your story to construct a creative visualization called the poster. So you use your uh, story and then you create a poster. And finally, you complete your file adding the visualization, and then you have the complete with extra e reports. So you see if you have the poster, finally you put it at the rear end of your report. And after completing the report, you have to do two things. First, upload the report and use your uh, way until uh, the upload it to the VLO and then upload the poster. So you have to deliver two results per team, a report and a poster. The report is as usual a Word document. The poster, depending on how you create the poster, could be a PDF or a PowerPoint or a, a TIFF or a, 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 a JPG, whatever. So there is no strict format, file format for the poster up front, but the format should be A4. Simply this format. It can be portrait, but it can also be landscape. It's your choice as a team to make it either portrait or landscape. so far. Um, Tim, if you want to think about the main text, what should it contain, you should, if you are smart, and you could be, start with an introduction chapter where you talk about your favorite topic and your motivation why that category and why that topic and how you came upon the working material then chapter one could be the answers on Q1A and B chapter two is about the incident response and chapter three could be about the lessons learned. So don't invent wheels, it will take you time. So if you're smart, you have four chapters, introduction, chapter one, the incident, chapter two, incident response, chapter three, lessons learned. Okay, you get it? Step by 
last step, first your articles, searching and finding, that's your foundation, put them in the annex. Step two, based on the five until seven uh, uh, selected articles, give the answers to the questions, meaning chapter one, two and three, put them in the main text, Step three, after you have finished your main text, you invent <coughs> an original and catchy story that reads like a, a thriller. And finally, after you have the story, you base your uh, poster on the story. Some teams might work the other way around. First have the poster and then write the accompanying story. That's okay, but you need them both. So what order you choose is a team decision. And finally, put your poster at the back of your report and then in summary, I don't know what the incident will be because you as a team choose your own incident, so I call it incident X, topic X. What happened, how did it happen, and what are the lessons learned? You can use all the slides of all the lectures, specifically the fundamentals that is uh, 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 on the menu shortly afterwards. Maybe you can use the briefs and assignment one, two, and three that could give you some clues. Your activities are first choosing the topic, then uh, performing the research, finally answering the question, and as a result, one team report the work and one post that in. That is the final assignment, a big one, so you, have, uh, you, you get extra time. Could you go back to the, uh, to the one with topic? Yeah, it's uh, the five articles that we need to use. Based on A or B? On B. Okay. So, for example, um, you, you could work your, uh, like uh, another way around. You could think, oh, wait a minute, um, there was this diginota problem. Well, then you start at B. Ah, I want to do as a team something about diginota. Then you have to find out in what category of incident does the Inota fit. And then you're going to see find five, six, or seven substantial articles about the Inota. So it, uh, you have to search for or think about a specific incident, a concrete, as, 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 as real life as possible. It must be, it must have happened in the past. Uh, it could be a, 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 a collapse of electricity uh, supply. It, it can be anything. What you like as a team. Maybe you want to use uh, uh, the Stuxnet attack on uh, the uh, power supply in Iran, whatever. <coughs> it's your choice. So you can start either by A, looking through the categories and thinking, oh, mm, mm, mm. Let's do uh, this one, and then can we see in the check in the list uh, that you got several lectures ago? That <laughs> Is your apple working? It's uh, fine. Yes, it's gone through. So you can you can use the root causes that are. Uh, uh, described in two lectures ago, I, I guess. You can look into that uh, uh, description of the categories if that's something that interests you as a team. Or you can think about, oh, this was a nice incident. We want to investigate research on this incident. And then you have to match it with the appropriate category. Yes. More questions about the final assignment. When I come to the homework, you will see when the deadlines are. No more questions? Excuse me.
this week. Then I go to the deadlines before I'll the homework. Okay. Of course, individual, you have to finish this lecture after it's uh, ended. Study the slides, prepare for the exam, then that's your individual uh, task. As a team, we have to do, after this lecture, two things. First, prepare for the evaluation, upcoming Thursday. Formulate uh, the tops and the tips uh, per item uh, on the thematical semester of security. Be ready at uh, 1.30 upcoming Thursday so that if you join uh, the white team or the zero team in uh, room E346, you have your tips and talks with you. Then for assignment number four, you have to up have uploaded your results, be it the report and the poster, on Monday the 15th before midnight. So you from this afternoon, you have two weeks to research and finish your assignment number four. Next Monday, it's a reserve week, no incident response lecture, so the Monday afternoon you have available. Next Thursday, or Thursday next week, the, uh, the 11th, it's reserve week, no tutoring, so you have the whole Thursday afternoon ready to work on your research. So from today on, only one tutoring session on the 4th of June, and then you can put all your time meant for incident response on your assignment number four. And please, 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 I've said it so many times, don't upload a dot .zip or a dot .ra. I want separate documents, a separate poster and a separate Word document with your report. I got a lot of RAs for assignment number three, and I will mention the teams because I'm, I'm not going to grade it. I want a, 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 a new delivery. I'm fed up with it. So I want uh, assignment number three, um, team two, please, a new upload of two separate documents. <coughs> team number nine, a new upload, two separate documents. Team number 10, the same. And team number 12, also the same. <coughs> And team number five, I got only one of the two needed documents. So deliver the missing document. And I didn't receive anything from team number one, four, six, seven, 15, and 16. <laughs> so if I don't get an extra delivery, then there will be uh, no six for the assignment part. Uh, before I take you to the start, that could be the routing for your So we've done now the assignment number four, the exam, the evaluation, and the homework. Starting with four, then to three, to two, to five. I will finish with uh, all the fundamentals. It's the same way you could use by answering for answering the questions. But before we start that, how about a break? Yes, please. Uh, ten minutes enough? Yes? At that uh, clock 45, I start.
is trying to um, sniff at the outside of your organization, the physical security part. That's what you did in your first assignment. <coughs> and then, if you are trying to imagine how a physical oriented attack could take place, you should focus on how can an attacker gain entry to the building of our organization. And if unseen enters, what will the next step be of this attacker? Uh, how, after finishing the attack, will the threat agent leave your building? So this is your for first mindset. The physical security part. But it can also be that an attacker is not going to attack your organization reaching the physical security, but he is going to breach your logical security. Then you have your virtual walls around your organization, your lines of defense, and an attacker is trying to break through as many lines of defense as possible, and of course you as an organization should put up enough fences at least to hinder the threat agent from performing the attack or when it's possible to prevent the attacker from reaching his goal. That's why you did your second job. Try to breach through the logical security of the company. The company. <coughs> and then you have to think about did we put in order lines of defense? If so, what are these lines? And is every line of defense um, complete? Uh, are there holes left, vulnerabilities? Or did we plug everything the right way? And you know, after you did your logical uh, black bag job, that there are a lot of tools available, most of the time open source tools, that can be used positively or negatively to probe lines of defense and to get through lines of defense. So, if you have your organization in order with a physical security strategy and a logical security strategy, then still shit will happen. Because a threat agent will always find a new way to get through your lumps of gold, your data. So if the event, the incident happens, you have to respond. Well, the first thing you have to do when you are responding to a security incident is, is it real? Or does it only seem to be a security incident? And if you know, okay, we have a real one, then you have to try to figure out in what, what category does it fit? Is it unauthorized usage, denial of service, malicious code, or inappropriate usage? So these are the four plus natural harm, the fifth. One of these four or five categories, you have to choose one category out of those with a specific incident that fits into that category. So if you want to focus on usage, then it can be either inappropriate or unauthorized. This is most of the time the insider uh, uh, security incident. This it could be insider, but also outsider. And this is most of the times an outsider who is trying to either deny your services or putting in some nasty bits and pieces of software. If you are able 
to detect the shit that has happened or maybe is still happening, and you know in what category it falls, then you could use standard checklist to attack or defend yourself against this type of incident. So use a standard way of defense. If it's not fitting in one of these uh, categories or it's a mixture, philosophy, then you have to follow the general steps for handling an incident. The best way to defend yourself against inside and outside shit is preparation. Think about the six P's a threat agent will use. And knowing your enemy, you should yourself also use this six P's pre prepare. If you know the 80-20 rule, if you put in 20% of your time in preparation, then you have 80% of your time in solving the problems, fixing the bugs you left because your preparation was not well done. If you do it the other way around, put 80% of your time in preparation, then it goes smooth and then 20% of your time is quite enough tackling an incident or a problem. Okay, if you prepare yourself well enough as an organization, then you have, of course, put up the lines of defense. The first line could be the services you as IT department could offer to your organization, being a vulnerability assessment or pen testing like ethical hacking. And you should uh, uh, um, be aware that the IT department, if they install hardware and or operating systems, that they take good looks at the BIOS and the operating system because there are a lot of possibilities um, if you don't handle them correctly that become vulnerabilities that can be used or misused by outside or inside track agents. Of course, you have your network. You don't have standalone systems anymore as an organization. You are communicating with many partners in the outside uh, world. So think about these six lines of defense relating to your network. These are your blue lines of defense. And you know, the enemy will always try to bypass your lines of defense, either by launching a denial of services, or malicious code, or trying to own your system as a box, or misusing your system as a box. And the ultimate goal is always, I want your data. So if you become aware that shit has happened or shit is happening, you hope, of course, that you get an alert or warning that will help you to detect, yes, there is something nasty going on. And if your preparation is well, then it's easy to detect, to identify what's happening and how to respond in a proper way. And prepare is not only performing a risk assessment, developing an architecture that is secure and develop response plans, but also put in countermeasures, safeguards, protections, like your lines of defense. 
And if you are properly prepared, you know shit has happened, then we simply start our incident response life cycle. We do detection and analysis, followed by containment, eradication, and recovery. And finally, we have our post-incident activities. A structured approach, and if you don't have a structured approach as a result of your preparation, you're going to fail. Hopefully, you find a beautiful incident that you are going to do your research on where not enough preparation was done. Then you have quite a lot of lessons that this organization could learn. Okay. Preparation, general stuff, and response-oriented stuff. Remember, you should be prepared for the worst. If shit happens, or shit has happened, it can be low impact, medium impact, or high impact. And if it's high impact, you hope it's not catastrophic. Because if it's catastrophic, your organization is in great danger. It could die. So then you have, if your preparation was okay, full steam, you all also have a BCP, a business continuity plan, and a disaster response plan at hand for the catastrophic situations. So we need, if shit happens, detect it as soon as possible by collecting <coughs> the alerts and warnings from different sources that can be manual but it can also be automated like I told you. You could use for example a scene, a security incident and event monitoring tool. <coughs> Put all the necessary log files on And this could be useful questions to determine what shit is at hand. What is the attack that occurred and how did the attack occur? Well, these questions could be very useful when doing your research. After detection and analysis, you need to prevent the security incident from causing more damage than needed. That's why you have to contain, put in isolation your, your IT infrastructure or your uh, information systems or your data or, or maybe the whole tree, maybe your complete organization. Remember the the goal of containment is not only isolating the event or the, the, the uh, results of the event, but also keeping the evidence on your systems safe and sound. But if you want to perform a deep going and incident investigation, you need the evidence and that it should have been preserved and collect it. And you have to inform all the people that are affected by uh, the security incident of what's going on and what to do and what not to do. And after the incident, then debriefing Step by step, what incident occurred, how did it occur, what did we do as response, and how did we, did this response, is be very useful because then you are 
trying to learn some lessons about the shit that has happened. So, <coughs> so if you did your preparation well, you have a simple checklist so that you don't forget any step. Shit has happened, you responded to the incident, but you have to have your preparation in order, and that's the overarching principle of incident management. If you want to do the right job implementing IT into an organization, you have to think about IT security. You can invent your own wheel, but you can also use standard wheels and adapt it to your own organization. So the most useful standard wheels are the, uh, the 27001, the information security management system, that's a management uh, uh, part, but the specific operational part is the 27002. It gives you very good clues what measures to take to prevent your data or your asset, assets from being corrupted. Two parts, two paragraphs go about incident management and uh, business continuity. Section 13 and section 14 is about business continuity. And you see it's a result of Section 4, Risk Management. We came from incident response. An incident response, as you know, is the middle part of everything with incident in the ISO and all. So incident handling is, you could say, stage three, containment eradication. Incident response starts with detecting and post-incident activity and incident management starts with the preparation and then ends with the post-incident activity. So if you are only doing incident handling, you don't do enough as organization. You have to have it embedded in an incident response process and that should be in, embedded into an incident management process. So it's a layered approach. To do what the relationships uh, exactly are, will this sheet tell you? So if you are analyzing the organization that uh, was confronted with your real life shit incident, you can look into these slides. Where did they do? Okay, where did they fail? Remember, this is always there. It's waiting to attack you, and you hope the organization is prepared enough to respond properly to any security breach. This should be there from start to end. If not, lessons learned. Nice to have all these systems, but if the employees of the organization are not aware of the fact that shit can happen every day, you know it's going to happen, you don't know when it will happen. So you have to raise awareness apart from defining policies and uh, being able to comply to all the rules that you ought to. If you want to raise awareness, you can use three, three things, confrontation, storytelling, and investigating. Your uh, assignment four is investigative, and it will end with a story that you're going to tell with your poster, and finally, showing the poster could, would be very confronting. 
Why bother? Well, that's because shit can happen. You don't know when, but it will. So there's always a risk every day, every moment, that some thing you couldn't even think about is getting real. Why is it so important? Well, you know, an organization is not there just for fun. It wants either deliver services or uh, deliver products uh, in order to uh, gain a profit or at least uh, yeah. make it a, a continuous way of operating and therefore they have assets and those assets, if they are critical and lost, then the organization could stop functioning. That's why you ultimately, as an organization, in your preparation, have to think about risks. And you could use the standard risk model, where you as an organization are over here, here are your assets, your lumps of gold, data are part of those assets. Here are the bad guys, either insider or outsider. And here is your risk. Why do you have a risk? Because an asset has vulnerabilities. And if you have vulnerabilities, then there is a threat that a threat agent might use this vulnerability to get to your asset. And because you as an owner are responsible for your assets, you have to plug the holes your vulnerabilities uh, are making in your assets and plugging them by countermeasures or safeguards. Very nice. But then you saw if you want to do something nice and good and clean and, and standardized about information security, uh, you have to perform a risk assessment. Well, that's what we did the previous uh, quarter. Simply, this is the complete risk process model. We did uh, the middle part to identify, to analyze, to evaluate risks. Finally, advise how to treat the discovered risks, <coughs> what countermeasures to put into place. Why, if you don't know what types of shit can happen, and what each type might cause for consequences for your organization, and if you don't have a, an estimate of the probability that, that this type of incident might happen, then you are in the dark, and you want at least shed some light on how to maintain your information security. And then you have to know something about all the components that make up a risk scenario. The actors, the type of threats or events that they can perform, uh, what assets they are focusing on, and when it's time to act. So that's the relationship between incident management and risk management. You can only put proper measures for incident management in place if you have done a, a good risk assessment. Because the result of a risk assessment should be threefold. Of course, you have your proposed measures to put in place as, as countermeasures against possible threat events. But there are two more parts that you should have as an organization ready in preparation. And that's an information security plan and a business continuity plan. So what do we need when it comes to risks? I don't go deep into it, you have to assess them and take the proper countermeasures. You have to meet the second part, 
your information security plan, and the third part, your business continuity plan. You need not only the results of your risk assessment, you also need concrete to build a fundament for your information security organization. That's one, at one hand, your information security plan with all the measures, methods, uh, policies, practices, checklists, whatever, to prevent the, the CIA, the confidentiality, integrity and availability of your services and data, but you also need the business continuity plan or program. What if the event that happens is catastrophic or nearly catastrophic? Then you have to act properly, not by <clears throat> trying to put the fire down, that's not enough. Apart from putting the fire down, you have to evacuate everybody and everything. So, why do we do all this? Because shit happens, you have to respond in a proper way, and you can only do that when you have your incident management uh, process in order, and that can only be done after you performed a good risk assessment where you know where the holes are and what, how you can plug them. Because there are these, these holes, if not plugged, are potential risks, and you need to be protecting the security of your organization. Not only the security, but also the safety, the safety of your personnel. And security is the condition of being protected against hazards, threats, risks, or loss. Okay. Remember the loss. We don't want people lo to lose. We don't want our property going lost. We don't want our, our golden lumps, our data, our proprietary information get lost, and our business reputation, we don't want to lose it either. If you're called uh, FIFA, then your business reputation is not so good at this moment. So each loss of an asset and these are four categories of losses, people, property, information, and business reputation, can infect your CIA, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the asset. You don't want that, because that will cost you time and a lot of money. So ultimately, if you want to put security in a proper way in place, you have to think about six types of security. Physical, your building, and so on. Your personnel should be secure, your operations should be secure, your data or information should be secure, your communications electronically and so on should be secure, and your networks should be secure. So security embodies six areas of security. And that's where this beautiful information security management system 27001 and the Stanford practice 27002 comes in. That will help you. Because if you look at the 27002, the code of practice, then you see that there are 18 sections that will cover all the six security areas that need to be covered. But you can't cover something right if you didn't analyze and assess it properly. That's why you start thinking about security, what are the rules we have to comply to? Legal requirements, compliance. Then we have to perform a risk assessment, and then we know what are our needs and requirements regarding to security. 
And that will bring us to the end. What you saw is bottom up, the shit happens or happened, your incident that you are going to choose, your topic, and then you can go upwards looking what should have been in place, is it in place, was it in place, how did it function, and if it was not in place, ha, a lesson to learn, if it was in place but not proper enough, ah, lesson to learn, if everything was proper and all over in the place and still the shit happened, then it must be a new type of shit. <laughs> Lesson to learn, adapt all the layers that you build so that you can cover the next time when this shit happens. Also, that difficult shit event. And now the job is yours to do the investigation, the research. The question. How about the assignment so far that everyone passed? Uh, if you have delivered per assignment two separate documents, then it's okay enough. It's not brilliant, but it should come out at least a six for the practical uh, uh, part. But if you didn't deliver a twofold uh, result of a per assignment, then you have a problem. You have to do the delivery before closing time, and closing time. But how do we know if we pass the, the oh, I, I, me so I mentioned the teams that didn't the, the, the third, third the, assignment. And I mentioned last time the teams that didn't deliver. So you know as a team well enough if you first made the result for a specific assignment, you can check if you have three assignments with per assignment a Word document and a PowerPoint uploaded. If you failed, you know you have to be fast to re-deliver your stuff. And I'm expecting per team uh, the two results of the fourth, the final assessment uh, assignment uh, today in two weeks. And I only mentioned the teams today that didn't deliver, either didn't deliver at all, or delivered a dot raw or a dot zip, and I want them to re-deliver two separate documents. Yes? And if your team was not mentioned, and you delivered properly? Well, team three is not Yes, so what I, I got from team, 3, 8, 11, 13 and 14, proper material, that's okay. And the teams uh, 2, 9, 10 and 12 have to re-deliver two separate documents. Uh, and the teams 1, 4, 6, 7, 15, 16 have to deliver everything and team five only delivered one part of the needed two. So the teams that were okay are okay. Another question. No more questions? Then I put the recorder out. And if you have still any questions, Feel free 